Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for coming to check out this video. If it's your first time coming to my channel, thank you. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoy this and then you'll get notified when there's new content. If you are returning, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to look at how we can um, have a journey, a real-time marketing journey, and within the journey, add in a tile or, or a step that basically means we can trigger a custom trigger to kick off and actually start. So an example that I'm going to use for this would be, um, let's say that we have a journey and then we get to a certain point and we want to go off and actually create an activity of some kind that's tied to the contact that's currently going through the journey and has hit that step in the journey. So we're going to look at how we create a custom trigger and then also how we use that trigger to where when it's called within the journey, it then goes and does something. So we're going to look at it from a very um, simple, um, basic level, um, but hopefully it gives you the idea. Then you can go off and kind of put your own requirements to it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So first of all, we are in the Dynamics 365 marketing app and we're in the real-time marketing area. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how you kind of start off with the trigger and then I'll go to one that I've already created. So creating a new trigger, very, very simple. I'm giving it a name. So I might say this is um, opportunity related that related task and then I give it a description and then all I'm doing is I'm just putting in some values these are just sort of words essentially we will end up with where we can pass through specific values into these um, attributes so that we're able to gather information and then use it later on so I'm going to say opportunity subject I might say um, opportunity owner oh if I can type opportunity owner and maybe account name whatever I want to, to put in and know that I want to grab these values from the journey or from something about the journey that I can then pass through and like I said create a task or something like that so I put as many as I want up to nine there's ten in total but the first one is always going to be the, the contacts or the the person going through the journey um, and then I've got nine other ones that I can add then I go ahead and click next. Um, and it's as simple as that in terms of actually creating the trigger. I go through and then once we've gone to this next screen where we we're, have actually started the creation of that trigger, we then get to the point where we're actually able to make it live. So it's sitting there, it's saving, perfect. So now we've got to this point. Don't get scared or nervous or think, oh God, this is code, I need to be a developer. This talks about sharing code snippets with the developers. We're not doing any of that. So we basically are ignoring and just skipping to the next step. And then finally we click ready to use and that's it. That's all we need to do in terms of creating the trigger. If I get back out of here, and I go into my list of triggers, I'm going to scroll down. Here's one I created earlier. So this one is my opportunity one activities. So this is basically got a series of um, sort of attributes. So we can see there that we've got the account, opportunity owner, opportunity subject, priority and proposed solution. We can see that the status is marked as ready to use so that we could actually go ahead and put this into a journey or we could use it as kind of like the starting point for a journey as well. So now the next steps I've got, uh, I could do it in, in either order, really. I could either go off and create my journey and then put this into the journey and then create my flow, or I can create my flow that determines what happens once the trigger is, uh, is called. And in this scenario, I'm going to do that next. So if I go into Power Automate, I've got one that I've created already. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit, just so we can see the steps. I have two steps in this. Really, you've got the trigger and then you've got as many other steps necessary depending on your requirements as to what you want to have happen when that trigger is fired, is kicked off. So the first step is when an action is performed. So um, if I was to um, create a flow and I have to have a trigger, I'm going to look for the Microsoft Dataverse connector and I usually would use when a record is created or modified, that kind of thing. This is when an action is performed. Now, the catalog, 
we're going to see a couple of items in the drop down. We want CXP, which I'm believing stands for customer experience. So once I've picked that, my category is then going to be custom. Then my table name, this is not tied to a table because this is tied to a trigger. So I'm going to say table name is none. That's the only option. Then what I get is a list of all of my custom triggers that I've created. We're not going to see all of the triggers that are in um, marketing, the out of the box ones. We're going to see our custom triggers that we've created as, as users, as marketers. So I can see there that I've got my opportunity one activities. I can also see actually the opportunity related task um, one that I've created, uh, but I'm going to go with this opportunity one activities. So I pick my action. And then, like I said, after that, it's what do you want to do with the data? So what happens is if I go into, um, let's go into a field that is a, um, well, let me click in the subject. So what happens is if I scroll down, those different variables or, or attributes that I created in the trigger when I typed out opportunity name, opportunity owner, account, these we can see here we've got account opportunity owner opportunity subject priority and so on i'm going to have in the journey which we'll see in a minute i'm going to be taking values and passing them through into these different um uh, attributes and grabbing the data and i'm going to use it to be able to say right in the subject i want to say new business deal and then i'm going to take the opportunity subject or the topic that I've passed through into the trigger, and I'm gonna use that as the subject for my task that I'm creating. Then in the, uh, in the description, I'm going to put some more details, and I'm going to use things like the opportunity owner, I'm gonna put the account name, I'm gonna pass through that data. So it's literally, like I said, in this scenario, two steps. My trigger that says when this um, custom trigger is fired off, when this action occurs, then I'm going to go ahead and use the add a new row step from Microsoft Dataverse Connector and I'm going to create a task. Simple as that. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is if I go to create a brand new journey, just so I can show you how we fit it in and then I can show you where, where I've already run, run it through and we've got a task that got, got created. So if I pick a new journey and say that I want to create one, so I'm going to say opportunity with custom trigger, just so you know what I'm creating. And maybe I'm going to have it that it runs when an opportunity is created. Okay. So what I can also do that's relatively new is I can go ahead and add an additional condition. So this is nice. So I might want to say only run it when the originating lead field uh, is not empty. So maybe I'm running this only when it's like brand new business so we've had a lead we've gone through we've um, uh, qualified the lead and that's how the opportunity got created so maybe I want to do that so keep that in mind that's a nice little addition even when you have a trigger you can add an extra condition to it so I'm going to go ahead and click create um, maybe I'm going to go ahead and just first of all send an email so I'm going to send opportunity process step one email um, and I can set that now in this journey I could have many many steps and that's fine we're not going to go through that and create a full journey I just want to show you that now I've got the option to add a step that is to activate a custom trigger so I'm going to pick that now what I'm going to do is I am going to select my opportunity one activities custom trigger that I've created and what happens is it says, oh, right, well, all of these attributes exist on this custom trigger. We have the um, account, we have opportunity owner, we have opportunity subject, priority, and so on. Um, if I just click out of that and back in, we'll see that each of these attributes needs to be mapped. And until we map, we're going to get a red icon next to it to show that it's not mapped yet. So I'm going to click on map attribute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the, so we've got the contact and then I can go to the account that would be linked to the contact. And from there, I've got all of the attributes on the account record. So I'm going to just go directly to account name. That's what I want to map the account field, uh, the account attribute to. Opportunity owner, what I can do is not just go from the contact, but the trigger that we've used at the start, I can go to that and say, right, well, I want to drill into the opportunity. And from there, if I scroll down, I can then go to the owning user of the opportunity 
And from there, I can go down further and then I've got access to all of the fields that are on a user record. So then I can say, well, I want their full name. So I'm going to map it to that. So I'm going from the trigger of opportunity created to the opportunity record that, that it's about to the owning user and get the full name from that owning user. Uh, opportunity subject, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the opportunity created um, trigger and I'm going to scroll down until I can pick the topic. Now what I can also do is I can also put in a value. So I might say that this is new business VIP is what I can say that the priority is. So I can pass something through that I've typed in as well. Um, I don't have to specifically pick an attribute if that makes sense. And finally, we'll do proposed solution and then we'll save that. So now all of those attributes are mapped. We've got a green tick next to all of them. And now the red icon has disappeared from here. I can carry on. I can do other steps in my journey, whatever it might be. But when I hit that point or when a contact hits that point of the journey, that is going to kick off the trigger and it's going to take that contact and it's going to say, right, I'm going to then do something with that information. I'm going to get the account from that contact. I'm going to get the opportunity that this is related to and so on. So if I now go out of my um, journeys and we can see here that I've got a new business um, uh, opportunity and I've got these different steps and I've already got it set up to where we've got this custom trigger. What I can now do is if I go into my outbound marketing area, I'm going to go into tasks. I can see here that we've got a task that's been created and we can see that we've been able to pass through. This was created by that flow in Power Automate. When someone hit that point of the journey, we've been able to create a task. So again, something really, really simple and straightforward, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how you could have a journey and then when things happen or don't happen, someone hasn't opened the email, someone has clicked on a link in an email, you could then trigger something to go off and then create an appointment, create a phone call record, a task, um, create some kind of custom record, whatever it is that you need, you can then have that as all of the different steps in your flow and power automate. So for me, I think this is a fantastic um, piece of functionality, meaning that we can go off and kind of kickstart something to happen um, by using those custom triggers. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you think you'll start using? Have you got any great ideas already that you're going to start and try? Let me know. Thanks. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.